another opportunity, another gigafactory. The other one didn't fall, didn't happen. So what about this one? Can we can we, can we trust that it might might actually materialise? It's a bit of a strange one, Nana. All week we've been expecting the announcement, the final confirmation that Tata, the Indian steel making, car making conglomerate that owns Jaguar Land Rover, will be announcing that it's building a gigafactory in Somerset near the site of the new Hinkley Point nuclear station. Mm. Gigafactories, of course, they make the big batteries that go into electric vehicles. Mm. And there's a sense that unless we build the batteries in this country, we won't build cars in this country because the batteries are heavy. So you need to build them close to where you build the cars, otherwise it's uneconomic to transport them. There is, as you, as you suggested there, uh, signs of another gigafactory being built up in the northeast, a place near Camus, near Blythe, north of Newcastle. And I've been up there a few times. That hasn't materialised either. That's why the British government's putting sort of so much emphasis mm. on this deal. And that's why Tata, frankly, have got them over a barrel. We can see their pictures. That's a Tata, uh, Tata makes steel. That's a Tata plant in the West Midlands where they're producing steel and other metals used for their car making in, in the West Midlands at Jaguar Land Rover. But unless we get this gigafactory near Hinkley Point in Bridgewater in Somerset, there's concern, along with another gigafactory up in the northeast, that British car making just won't survive. And, of course, British car making employs tens of thousands of mm -hmm. people. There's a kind of ideological debate going on at the moment within the Conservative Party. Should the government be throwing loads of money at companies in order to incentivise them to invest? And... I guess the sense is if they don't, then other countries will do that, then other countries will get those factories. So be in no doubt, this is a high-stakes negotiation. People in the dark in government have been telling me it would be announced this week. Well, it's Friday afternoon, the weekend's almost here, yeah. and the announcement still hasn't been made. I've literally been... I came into the newsroom this morning thinking I'd be about to get on a train and go down to Somerset from central London. Oh, you poor thing. But, but, now you're still here. But, but, it, <laughs> but, but, it, but it hasn't happened, so... It would be really odd if this isn't announced next week. It, mm. There might be then speculation that the British government has, actually hasn't pulled this deal off or Tata are really, like, you know, turning the screws to get the best possible deal that they can in terms of subsidies and other financial induce, inducements to invest in this country. Has any of this, um, you know, because we seem to be squabbling for investment now, has any of this had uh, been because of the fact that we've left the EU? Has there been any impact? Has it had any impact on this at all? Well, British car making is still going great guns. We're producing more cars than pretty much at any time in our history. The trouble is that the companies that are producing the cars, even though they're in Britain, they're not actually British companies mm. in many cases. So British car making was often, you know, there's a sense that if we leave the EU, it's all going to collapse. Mm. And actually, on the contrary, just as many people that voted or argued for Brexit suggested that the German car makers would be lobbying for sort of lower you know, restrictions on trade between UK and EU uh, car makers and so on. Those German car makers are now starting to make those arguments. So car making goes on. You know, European-based car makers still sell a lot more cars here than we do sell there. So I don't think there's any sense that British car making is going to end because we're outside the EU. But I do think... As we move towards electric vehicles, and of course this, this law is still in place, a law which I actually think will be uh, suspended, that you can't sell cars with petrol and diesel engines. That is new cars. You can yeah. sell used cars, but yeah, you can't sell cars, new cars with petrol and yeah. diesel engines after 2030. The Europeans, the EU, they've already pushed that back to 2035. I think that's completely unrealistic. The government wants to suggest that it isn't because it wants to encourage investment in gigafactories, producing batteries... But a lot of the investors in gigafactories, they say, well, look, Britain, are you really serious about this? There's, you know, there's still a lack of charging infrastructure. As many of my friends with electric car, I haven't taken the plunge yet. I don't know about you. I, I, I won't do it now. I'm, dri I'm driving a really old Citroen C1 that's done about 180,000 miles. I love it a bit. I, th I think a lot of people feel that way, Nana. Why should they be buying electric cars when they're very, very expensive? And, al grand. and also, mm. you know, when you, if you need to go quite a long way... And you get to the service station and you've got to wait ages to get in the queue to charge. So there's this sort of range anxiety mm. going on. So I don't necessarily think that electric vehicles are the, 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 sh you know, the shining city on the hill that they're often uh, portrayed to be, though I do think we need to gradually wean ourselves off fossil fuels. And that sense that maybe EVs aren't everything they've cracked up to be, I think that's part of the reason why governments around the world are really having to 
heavily incentivized companies to invest in these gigafactories. In America, they've got this thing, the Inflation Reduction Act. They're throwing tens of billions of dollars at companies to invest in electric vehicle plant and all kinds of other so-called you know, green investments. And in the EU too. And given that, the British government feels it, whatever the ideological concerns it may have about chucking loads of money at business and picking winners in the old sort of 1970s phrase and not allowing the free market to do its thing. I think the British government feels, ministers feel, I've talked to lots of them about this, unless they get in there and start basically giving away taxpayers' money and subsidies to these profit-making companies, then we won't get the investments that we need. And that gigafactory in Somerset, it's 9,000 well-paid jobs, uh, Nana. So ministers will be upset if mm. this deal doesn't actually come off. I'm not saying yet it's not coming off. I'm not saying yet that actually the Spanish have done a counter bid and it's not going to come to the UK. But this delay, I thought we'd mark the end of this week without that announcement. This delay is a little bit alarming. Mm -hmm. well, well, hopefully next week you'll be giving us some news, or even maybe later on today, Liam. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Liam Halligan.